So, Dana Gentry, tell us who you are in 60 seconds and what's your superpower? Ooh, superpower. I wasn't prepared for that one. Okay. Um, my name is Dana Gentry. I have been in the real estate industry for this is the going on 16 years. And um, I still have a team that sells in Kentucky. I got into recruiting into the leadership uh, side of things about seven years ago. Um, I have been a team leader in a Keller Williams Market Center and grew that market center from 64 agents to 224 agents in right at two years. Um, and then from there, got the opportunity to continue on the leadership path and uh, have become um, OP of a couple market centers and uh, also the growth director for the Ohio Valley region. Mm -hmm. So leadership and recruiting is pretty important to your roles. Yes. Extremely it's important all, to your It's roles. all I do. <laughs> <laughs> Eat, sleep, and breathe leadership and recruiting. Yeah. Um, so let's dive into this. So the world is changing. Yeah. It has changed. Uh, we are in the throes of that change as we speak. Wait, I didn't get to say my superpower. Well, what is it? Um... Gosh, actually, that's a great question. Um, I think it's probably just uh, the ability to build re build deep relationships with people. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. You're really good at that. Or throw, throw an event. I can throw a pretty mean event. A really good party. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so dive into where you are right now. So in this environment that we're in, um, the world has changed as we know it for the most part. Real estate is what it is. However, human interaction and, and building relationships is, is, well, it's kind of a different norm now. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing to continue to maintain that authenticness about yourself uh, as, as you wake up every single day? And then as you pour into the people in your region, the people in your market centers, what, what, what are you doing in that space? Yeah. So first of all, I would love for everybody that's watching to grab a pen because I'm going to give you some things that you are going to need to write down. Um, mm -hmm. And the first one is uh, I have been um, I've been not loving the word crisis. And I think it sounds kind of like a, a really dramatic word. And uh, until I heard a great acronym for the word crisis, and I've shared this with some of uh, the on the other live streams that I've been on. And so the acronym for crisis is circumstances requiring an immediate shift in strategy, circumstances requiring an immediate shift in strategy. And the reality is that we, our entire world is, has been shifted, right? So um, we have to do things maybe differently and we have to do them quick and we have to have an immediate shift in our strategy. So I want to start by that. Mm -hmm. So then um, how I'm saying strong for my people right now. Pretty much just three things. Um, number one, uh, I'm drawing closer and leaning in on my faith. I think um, spirituality is very important. Um, we, we all got here somehow. And so I think right now, in order to keep a really good mindset and a headspace, uh, I'm drawing drawing closer to that. Number two, I'm super, you know this very well, monitoring what I choose to let enter my brain. Our minds are so powerful. And um, I don't know about you guys, but I can quickly kind of tell when I when I'm when my mind is getting in a different direction. And so I'm choosing to allow what I enter into my brain, um, who I listen to, what I watch, what I read, um, all of those things, because the very first thing that we have to do is get our mindsets right. And if you are letting uh, a lot of the news and you're letting a lot of people who have political agendas and um, you're letting all of those things into your mind, then for me, that's not a good thing. And then the third thing that kind of goes along with that is I'm really monitoring who I seek wise words of wisdom from. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk and there's a there's a lot of live streams and there's a lot of, uh, of videos and all these things. And I think it can be easy for people to to push their own agendas. And so I'm just being really wise who I listen to. Mm -hmm. So going back to key people that, um, that are like my tried and trues, uh, Gary Keller, John Maxwell, Craig Groeschel, um, Andy Stanley, um, just really great leaders who are wise. And then also people who have lived through, you know, a lot of shifts before mm -hmm. this is a different one yep. because this is a pandemic. Um, however, just really limiting uh, who who I seek words of wisdom mm -hmm. from. And also, actually, one thing I would add to that, uh, I was listening to a Zoom with Gary Keller last week, and he said, 
during this time, the advantage is going to go to um, th to those who have foresight, right? So the advantage is going to go to those who um, they're seeing not today or tomorrow, but they're seeing six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, they're going to, th they're seeing this play out long-term. And so those who have foresight, that's where the advantage is going to go. And so I think you have to really watch who you're listening to and, and, and how you're growing and learning and then look at what's to come. Mm -hmm. And then as you take all of that, so the Maxwell, the, um, the, the Gary, the Andy Stanley, the other part of that was, then what are you doing for your people? Mm -hmm. um, for my people, I think the biggest thing that I can do that any, any leader can do right now is uh, set the, you, well, let me back up a second. If you aren't right first with your mindset, it's going to be really hard for you to lead your people. Mm -hmm. So you have to get right. You have to do a check, a mental check on yourself first. And then for your people, you've got to be the leader. So, um, you know, not to say that we all haven't had a freak out moment here and there. Maybe we're getting a little stir crazy or or we get nervous or fear or anxiety creep in. Um, that's normal. However, you have to be the voice of positivity. You have to ring true in your leadership with your people, because when when a crisis happens or when something like this, uh, a crazy pandemic leaders will rise to the top. I love what John Maxwell says. This will pull out what's inside of a leader. So I always think what whatever this is pulling out of me during this time, I want it to be the best for for the those that I have the privilege that I was blessed with the opportunity to get to lead. Um, and so bringing them great mindset stuff, giving them actionable things that they can do to grow their business uh, every single day. We're, we're getting ready to implement a little daily Google check in form with some of my people because I want to know um, what was the best thing that happened to them that day? What's their mindset like? Um, who did they help? Who did they touch inside of our offices that day? Uh, what was the one thing that they didn't get done, but that they really need to do tomorrow that they mm -hmm. can't let go on? So just being the leader to them, really. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd say you've done an amazing job. Thanks. You have. Now, I'm a little upset that, you know, when you said the who's you seek wise wasn't my name wasn't on there. But I mean, I guess, I guess we'll just have to get past that. Okay. I hear enough of you <laughs> on, the day, on the daily. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So let, let's go now into, let's go into some habits real quick. Okay. So daily routines into your habits, walk us through that. What are you doing personally Yeah. that maybe other people can um, uh, learn from or they can model after? Yeah. Hey Jill. Okay. So, um, well, this has changed, right? Uh, I'll answer that question mm -hmm. in just one second. So this has changed. My daily routine has changed. Um, and the, and the one thing I want everybody to write down for this I want you to write down five words. I was born for this. If you're a leader, you need to write down those five words. I was born for this. And so here's why I want to say that, because our daily routines have all changed. Mm -hmm. um, we're not all getting up and going to the gym and we're not all going out and, and seeing people face to face. We're not doing those things, right? They've changed. However, um, I truly believe I was built for this. I was mm -hmm. built and I was born to add value to people's lives and to help them uh, during a time of need. And so I think as, as long as you really believe that, then your new daily routines uh, won't be, while they're different, uh, they won't be you know painful, I guess to say. So number one is um, just every single morning, get your mindset right, get real, get right. You know, I get up and say, Alexa, turn on Christian music. Uh, every single morning because I want to get morning. I want to get my mindset right. Um, I put my makeup on every day, no matter if I'm walking out of this house or not. Mm -hmm. uh, you just you got to get up, get ready, get yourself right. Um, you're we still are working. We still have a job to do. We still have lives to change. Um, and I think it's funny. Someone said yesterday, how how many days have you worked in your pajamas? And my answer was none mm -hmm. uh, because I might work in yoga pants sometimes, but pajamas, none, because I still have a job to do. And I'm working more hours. You guys may feel like this too, more hours, longer hours, harder than I was even before this started. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, that's number one. Number two daily routine is check on my people, check on your people. Um, I am in a crazy, Oh, I wish I could reach that. I just bought this huge box of like a hundred note cards and I'm sending all these cards every single day um, calling, texting, checking on our people first. 
And then after that, getting right into uh, lead generation and diving into my pipeline. And I know we're going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, and then really the only other thing daily um, that you also know that I love to do is I got to get outside at least for a couple for a 30 <laughs> minutes to an hour a day. Um, so whether I'm doing a call outside or we have a quick 30 minute break and I'm walking or bike riding or something, we just, I think we need vitamin D right now. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a people person. I'm used to getting out and being with people all day, every day. And so, um, getting to sit in a room with four walls all day is, right. can, can be a little crazy. Okay. That was really good. So mindset, check on your people, legion rate, uh, dive in your pipeline and get outside. Yep. Stay the routines. Love it. Okay. Shift gears. Let's go into recruiting. Okay. Tell me all about recruiting. What is it about recruiting that you love? It brings you energy and walk us through that real quick, because then I want to get to the point of people that aren't recruiting. Okay. I want to hear that. So, um, okay. So Gary Keller always says, uh, let me see. I think this would be the best way to start this. Yeah. Gary Keller always says there's two types of people. I shared this earlier on a zoom I was on and not, neither are right or wrong. Right. But there's one thing. There's one person, person a that wakes up every single morning and they say, how can I grow? How can I do more? How can I build? How can I go um, impact more lives? How can I, how can I grow, 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 grow? Then there's person B who wakes up every morning and they say, um, how I love what I have. How can I keep safe what I have? How can I protect what I have? How can I sustain what I already have? Uh, I am definitely a person A. So for me, recruiting is just what gives me energy. I don't look at it as a job. I mm -hmm. love to help people. I love to change people's lives. Um, you know, no matter what company you're with, there's a company for everybody. And particularly this company changed my life. So, mm -hmm. I mean, going from one stream of income to eight plus now in five years is a life changer. Yeah. And so I think if you have, if you're blessed with the opportunity to do that for somebody else, then um, take that seriously because yeah. it is serious. Well, I think you also said to your point, you were born for this. Right. Right. And so in the recruiting space, and all of you know, if you've been listening to I Love Recruiting podcast, that we have an equation. That equation looks like this. Recruiting equals influence equals leadership. And what we're hearing right now is, is all three of those. So walk us down the path now because you were born for this. I agree to that. Of the person who says it's just maybe not the right time to recruit. I'm a little yeah. on the fence with that. Um, help me understand what your thought process with someone, if someone says that. Okay. So it, I would like to tell a story. Is that okay? Go for it, yeah. Okay. So um, I can, under, while I can understand that, what I would say is uh, this past weekend, I have been working, um, actually, I, I keep a pretty deep pipeline and I had been working to build a relationship with a person um, at another brokerage for probably the last cu couple of months. Mm -hmm. And on Friday, I thought, you know what? I hope that I just was honestly, they were on my mind. And so I, um, I sent them a text and I said, Hey, I just wanted to check in. I know it's been a while. I just wanted, you were on my mind and I just wanted to see, um, are you safe? Are you healthy? How's your family? How's your business? Just kind of a check-in. And they responded because most of the time that's what people, no one's going to leave you hanging on that text. Um, or that call and just a, a check in. Hey, how are you doing? And so, and I really was, you know, wondering if he was okay. So then um, he actually responded and said, yes, doing good. Um, we're great. We're healthy, blah, 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 blah. And I said, you know, there's, there's some, all the changes that are happening. I'd love the opportunity for us to be able to hop back on a zoom and have a conversation. Um, Cause I just have some different thoughts and some different opportunities for you. And actually he said, that would be great. Now's a really good time because I'm quarantined, right? So over the weekend, we were able to hop on the phone and this individual said to me these exact words, Dana, this couldn't have been better timing because I'm actually making a decision to leave blank where I'm at right now um, by the end of the month. And I've been talking to blank and I'm either going to go there or I'm going to come or I'm going to come with you. So we need to have these conversations. And I thought, man, uh, if, and this is a great agent, mind you, a really, really great producer. And so I thought to myself, uh, people are moving. And if we don't think that they are, mm -hmm. they are. And the, the reality of it is a lot of people, depending on what brokerage they're at right now, um, they're scared. They don't know if their independent brokerage is going to survive through this. They sure. may not be getting training. They mm -hmm. may have LMNO PQ, <laughs> all the other <laughs> loans that are going on right now. But I think at the end of the day, um, for someone who has a limited belief around recruiting right now, thinking this isn't the right time, 
it's always the right time when you come from a servant's heart. And I love um, the saying, you have to serve first and sales second. And so if you truly are coming from contribution and you're coming from the heart and you're, and you're checking on people and you're thinking, man, I could make a big difference with them in their lives. Um, then, then this is, this is actually a ripe time. Um, mm-hmm. If I can use that word, uh, because people people need help right now and they need leadership, quite mm-hmm. frankly. So someone just asked a question. Actually, there's been two questions that have been asked. So when reaching out to the office members, uh, et cetera, what is the response like? So let's pause that one. And and why don't you share that with the, the, the free, the free stuff that will have them download how they respond or wh- whatever it is you put on Google. You want to do that? Um, reach out to your office members, et cetera. What is the response like? Fine. What's the woman answer that? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, when reaching out to office members, et cetera, was, uh, well, people are appreciative. They're thankful. Um, and honestly, people at other companies are appreciative and they're thankful. I think right now, you know, actually let me back up. So it's really interesting. I would love to ask every person on this call right now, how many of your service providers have reached out to Mm y'all? Like, has your insurance person called you? Has your, uh, you know, your banker called you? Maybe your banker, if you're applying for loans, but, um, has your financial advisor reached out to you? Has the person who does your hair reached out to you? Has uh, Have your service providers reached out to you? Because I don't know about you guys, but uh, mine have not. Mm-hmm. And um, and it's and it's crazy to think about. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy. Yourself. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. Um, but we as a real estate industry, we 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 were born for this too, Mm -hmm. because we're used to checking on our people. You know, Gary Keller said something brilliant last week. He said, um, think of the 33 touch. Think of this like a realtor would think of this for their business. Like how, how would a realtor and some of you probably are, have been, um, how would they think about this? They, the 33 touch was built for times like this Mm -hmm. because the idea of the 33 touch is that, uh, is that you're there in that moment when they think, when they get ready to buy or sell, Um, and so this is where top of mind awareness comes from, because if you're just there and you're touching you're top of mind for them. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, the response to answer your question has been appreciative and thankful. And honestly, some people are scared and Mm -hmm. they just need, they just need leadership. They just need somebody to help guide them. They just need some, Mm -hmm. some like love. So, so one more quick question. Let's, let's do this one in 30 seconds. So we can get to your action items. Okay. Uh, how would you recommend building your pipeline for a newer team later? And I'll start real quick, build relationships, mm-hmm. right? just, just get out and start building relationships and come from a human to human standpoint yeah. uh, and simply say, Hey, listen, how, how are you? How have you been impacted? Um, what else would you say to that? Yeah. Start with relationships, start with people that you may or may not know, lean on the people that you have relationships with already that have great relationships too. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing I would say is get, get a platform. I mean, use recruiting bridge, use whatever it is and, and keep it organized. Um, because when we write something down, when we keep notes, when we do those things, our, uh, success is yeah. so much higher. Yeah. Okay. Three action items people should do right now. Three action items people should do right now. Okay. I would say, uh, number one is, um, get your mindset right every single day, get yourself, um, get real, get right. The first tactic in the shift book, um, get your mindset right every single day. And if you have a moment where you start to feel like, oh, I don't know, like a fear is creeping in, anxiety is creeping in, or I'm not really sure if we're all going to be okay or, or not, um, just do something that that you can ground yourself and get your mindset back right. Because we have to have super strong mindsets in order to uh, to, to sustain through this and to, to come out stronger on the other side. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two yep. would be, um, and I, this kind of goes with a pipeline question, but get your action plan together and just go take action. So is it that every morning you're going to get up, you're going to get your mindset right for an hour. You're going to do whatever you need to do. And then you're going to spend, you know, two hours calling, um, and touching on your current people as a leader. And then you're going to spend the next two hours, uh, making care calls to people who are not in your current office, like what, whatever your action plan is, get it right. Um, and get it together and then just go and do it. And then mm-hmm. the number three thing that I would say action step wise is just come from contribution. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Linda McKissick always has lately been saying this and it's just genius. You have to connect with people and then you have to collaborate. 
And that's usually something that we as leaders and as realtors are great at. We're great at collaborating. We love to share. We love to see what other people are doing. Um, and, you know, I, I love what Gary said. Once you have your action plan set, then go take action on that and then slaughter with value. Like let your value be what gives you the upper hand and the advantage over everybody else. Um, because there's a lot of value to be given right now. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, actually, one other thing, too. Am I running out of time? Just go. Okay. Uh, one other thing, too, is um, someone said this, and I can't remember who now. It's going to drive me nuts. Maybe it was Gary Keller. But anyway, um, they said, this is the perfect time to take mind share. The mind share that you take today will be the market share that you take in the future. So if you um, if you are, you know, maybe struggling with, oh, I'm not getting somebody right now, or I'm not getting this person right now. Um, whatever that looks like, just remember right now you're building mind share. You need to be taking mind share, go and help, go and love on your people. Um, and then that will give you the market share to take later. Gotcha. Very good. Okay. So high five. Nice job. And we're three minutes over. Not too bad. Oh. Where can people find you? Wait, you didn't ask me about the books I'm reading. Yeah, you ran out of time. Oh, shoot. Well, can I share them? Well, hurry up. Okay, really, really fast. Okay, the books I'm reading right now, I would recommend to anybody that's in leadership um, to read is number one, obviously Shift. Uh, number two is a really oldie but goodie. Um, oh, I don't have it right here. Tough Times Don't Last. Uh, tough, let's see. Tough Times Don't Last, But Tough People Do. Correct. Um, and Who Moved My Cheese? Gary Keller said every person needs to pick back up Who Moved My Cheese and read that again. And then the best story wins. And then John Maxwell leadership. Okay. People can find me at Dana Gentry at kw.com is my email. Um, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Dana G Gentry. And then also um, I have a podcast with Linda McKissick called Everything Life and Real Estate that is available on all podcast platforms. Nice job. Crushed it. Thanks.